Australia lost a great man today, journalist and this program's first host, Mike Willisey. My old friend Ray Martin, who will join me in a moment, described him as simply the best. And he was. Uh, this is Michael Willisey speaking. I'm sorry you can't see me, but I hope you can hear me. Believe it or not, we've just lost lights in our studio, but we can get on with the program. Even in the dark, Mike Willisey could shine. Sorry about that, we seem to have lost Sydney. Uh, I suppose a lot of Melbourne people would think that's not such a bad thing. What a life, what a life he's had. Amazing. He carved out a niche in television which no one had occupied before. Welcome to A Current Affair. He brought tough standards to it. He produced a top rating program and he's a one off. You could have been fighting with your parliamentary colleagues. On an empty yeah. stomach? Things that we said when we became a Son of Labor Senator Don Willisey, Mike started his TV career in 1967 as a reporter on This Day Tonight at the ABC. There was movement at the station. The word had got around that the cult from old regret had gone away. He covered the war in Vietnam with cameraman David Brill. We were both pretty young when we first went, so it was all pretty new. And it was very, very frightening and exciting and the power, the Americans, the invasion of the Americans, the machinery, the helicopters. It was an amazing experience to cover this as a young man. Between us and the hill is a small Cambodian village. The villagers are frightened. They have no way of knowing. They are not the target. New South Wales Police Forces had... In the early 1970s, Mike joined the Nine Network, hosting A Current Affair, a big step in more ways than one, as his daughter Amy recently told Australian Story. Dad has made some really bold moves throughout his career that have propelled him upwards. For example, as a 29-year-old marching into Clyde Packer's office at Channel 9 and demanding to produce his own nightly current affairs show, not only had that never happened on commercial television before, but Dad had never even produced a story himself before. Welcome to A Current Affair. Hi, girls. At that time, he discovered one of Australia's greatest talents. Thanks for coming in, Paul, and giving us a hand. Hello, Mrs Universe. Hello, Paul. Nice seeing you, <laughs> Miss Universe. <laughs> what are the particular qualities that you um, look for in a man? I like a man to be strong on the outside like you and gentle <laughs> on the inside. Well, like me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you are. Soon he became a household name and as much as he hated it, a sex symbol. Yes, I read that article in Clio. Uh, <laughs> Mike Willisey Enigma, a quiet sex symbol or a dull man with thick lips. <laughs> I read that. My first ambition was to be regarded as a good journalist and to earn that and to be called a sex symbol and be told you, that's why your program works. That actually was an insult to me. Jermaine Greer saying, front page of the afternoon papers, the sexiest man I've ever been with. Totally accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get tired of being called, uh, of, of having to say all the time, um, I'm not the sexiest man on television, I'm, I'm a hard-working journalist? I've never said that. <laughs> I've tried to promote the fact that I'm sexy. <laughs> Jermaine's the only one who <laughs> went it. along with it and actually... Well, I'm not sure if she endorsed it, but she said it. Do you want to cut out sexy or not, there's no doubt he was arguably the best interviewer of his time. Here he grills Ma Sheila, one of the infamous leaders of the Orange People cult. I beg your pardon. I said your godlike figure is happy to be... I beg your a pardon. Whoever you happen to be. Well, is he a pimp or is he not? You know, you're a worthless man. Mike's grilling of one-time Liberal leader John Hewson over his proposed GST probably cost Hewson the 1993 election. If I buy a birthday cake from a cake shop and, there, and GST is in place, do I pay more or less? But if it is a cake shop, it's cake from a shop that has sales tax and it's decorated and candles, as you say, that attract sales tax, and of course, we scrapped the sales tax yep. before the GST okay, would be imposed. Okay, but it's just an example. Hmm. If the answer to a birthday cake is so complex, you do have a problem with the overall GST, don't you? It was a good question and a bad answer. <laughs> 
Today, John Hewson is full of praise for the interviewer who brought him undone. I thought he was extremely professional. I mean, he was passionate about his craft. He saw the importance of it, believed in it, and carried it through. And uh, he had a disarming interview style, which he used to effect. Well, we'll forget the last question. Over the years, one. he formed a long-running friendship with disabled boy Quentin Kennahan. I've filmed many stories over the years. You're a wise man. But no story has had more impact or lasting memories than the story of Quentin. It's a relationship that continued when Mike recently joined Seven's Sunday night program. You, you don't want to be intrusive. After 30 years, finally, Mike Willis, he doesn't want to be intrusive. That's a joke. OK, have you got a girlfriend? No. What about all those headlines that over 20 years then, uh, uh, a help and a hindrance? After 20 years in TV, he gave this interview to Ray Martin on Midday. I don't know why uh, I've got into a bit more trouble than, than a lot of my colleagues, uh, but I, I never sought it. I, and I think, you know, I, in fact, try to avoid publicity, but... And have it doesn't done. hurt, though, does it? Well, in the early years, when I didn't have any experience at avoiding it, um, I suppose as long as they're paying attention to you, uh, that's an advantage. But I certainly didn't always enjoy it. Mike Willisey admits he had a problem with drinking during his life, but he blamed medication and not booze for being tired and emotional one night while presenting. Stan Pryor's talent for belting out a tune <laughs> on his trusty old corner. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but I'd already thought of something funny to say, and it's part of this introduction. I had two scotches and two Valium. So, <laughs> could I start this all again? Well, I was sitting at home watching and uh, realised something wasn't right, and uh, we all saw what happened. Mike's brother Terry remembers it well. The unfortunate part about that is that he's done so many great things in television, brilliant interviews, arguably the best interviewer on Australian television of his era, and for that to happen, it happened. Um, and it's what some people still remember so well, which is a bit of a shame. But one slip-up can't define Mike Willisey. He won many awards. The winner is Michael Willisey. He was inducted into the Logies Hall of Fame in 2002. <laughs> Married three times and father to six children, Mike leaves behind a huge legacy, overshadowed in recent times by his battle with throat cancer. The thing that drives me on most, and this is interesting because I do have cancer, is that I don't want to start looking backwards. I always want something coming up. I always want to have something in front of me that I can do well. And that he did. Another former host of this show is, of course, Ray Martin. And, uh, Ray, you're back in familiar surroundings. Indeed. Yeah. It was nice to watch that, though, Ray. It, it, it was, wasn't it? You yeah, know? I mean, it's a sad day, but, it, but it's time to celebrate. I mean, he had an extraordinary career that uh, and set the high jump bar higher than any of us can reach. Yeah, too right. You know, the, mm. the nine boss Hugh Mark said today that, you know, the term legend's bandied about a fair bit in this, in this world. But he said when it comes to Mike, he really was a legend, wasn't he? Yeah, and it wasn't, as, as Chris showed there, it wasn't just the interview with the Prime Ministers mm. or with the politicians. Yeah. It was Quentin, it was yeah. Hogan. I mean, the idea to, to get someone like Hogan and say, realise that current affairs don't have to be boring. Yes. And current affairs doesn't have to be worthy. Yes. It was never boring or worthy under Willis. Some of his guests were boring. Yes. Um, and he couldn't do much about that. But he was. He, his idea was that, you know, you can be entertaining as well as important. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned politics, you know. He did so many political interviews o over the years. And as Chris said too, you know, we knew his father was a Labor man in WA, I think it yep. was, wasn't it? You yep. know, But we never really knew which side of the fence he sat on. Now, Polly's always, as they do, mm. accused him of being showing bias, yeah. and, you know, of course they can and they do. Yeah. Um, I'd defy anyone to pick Mike Willis's politics. Yeah. Um, and he would be just as tough or just as fair um, on both sides of politics. And, yeah. uh, and it was just that, you know, we, we talked about that, that uh, signature pregnant pause that Willow had. Yes. 
And yes. the politicians hate silence yeah, on a, in a television yeah, studio yeah. like this. And so yeah. to have that pause, they've got to say something. And too often they stuck their foot in it. That's it. You know, uh, yeah. Which is a great tactic. Yeah, terrific. Exactly. You know, a lot of the young journos, we'd, we'd sit there and we'd, we would learn. We'd watch and learn from him because... You'll agree with me. He wasn't a showman. He didn't have a big ego, and you know, and and, and he was he was just calm. Yep. And he would give that stare when, you know, he we all knew at home. Hey, but that, but I think especially he in the studio. Answer. In the studio, there was a, mm. you know, I hate to word the word arrogance. Mm. Um, but in fact, he was almost arrogant, like Greg Chappell is arrogant, yeah. or like um, you know, like Roger Federer is because he was arrogant. great. Because he knew he was good, he knew yeah. he was the best, and yeah. you shouldn't shy yeah. away from that if you if you're so good. Yeah. And he was very good, but he was always accurate. He did his homework. Yeah. Um, was never rude, despite uh, the, no, the, yeah. the woman there suggesting he was. He wasn't rude. No, he wasn't. No, no, indeed. You know. What? Few people probably knew that he was a deeply religious man, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Especially in his latter years of life. He? That's right. You know, with all the <laughs> happenings, he's probably getting an exclusive up there. Well, as someone said, you know, how are you going to def- if, if there is a God, you know, and you, you get up yeah. to the pearly gates, how are you going to defend yourself? And he said, I'll go to purgatory and they can work it out from there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. Thanks for popping in. No, my pleasure. And, uh, you know, if, if you want, you can host the rest no, of the no, show. No. You're happy with me, the controls? Oh, but you're doing a great job. Good on you, you're old mate. Thanks for coming. Good to see you.